Hi, welcome back to Ms. Vell's classroom. Today in class we will continue our United States decades. I'll be talking about the 1940s today. So I'm going to start with the presidents. Franklin D. Roosevelt continued as president to start the 1940s. In 1940, he was elected as president for the third time. FDR was the only United States president to be elected for more than two terms. Roosevelt promised he would do whatever he could to keep the United States out of World War II, which had broken out in Europe. However, when Japan bombed the United States base at Pearl Harbor, Roosevelt had no choice but to join the war. FDR laid the groundwork for future peace by coming up with the concept of the United Nations. Roosevelt died in 1945 while serving his fourth term as president. Harry S. Truman became president when FDR died. A few months after Truman became president, the Germans surrendered in World War II. The Japanese still would not surrender. Truman had to make a decision, either invade Japan with soldiers or use the newly created atomic bomb. Truman decided to use the atomic bomb. The U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. A few days later, they dropped another atomic bomb on Nagasaki. The Japanese surrendered shortly after. After World War II was over, Truman came up with the Marshall Plan, which was to restore Europe, which was largely destroyed by war. A few fun facts about Truman are the S in his name doesn't actually stand for anything, and his motto was the buck stops here. And here is a very famous picture of Truman. And after the 1948 election, in which the Chicago Tribune got the election results wrong. So it says, Dewey defeats Truman. And then here is Truman holding that up. some of the main events in the 1940s. In September 1940, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, the most visited park in the National Service today, was officially dedicated. The park whose land was acquired in part by John D. Rockefeller it straddles the North Carolina and Tennessee state lines. In September 1940, U.S. Congress approved and enacted the first peacetime conscription draft. In July 1941, the United States occupied Iceland, taking over its defense from Great Britain, which thwarted a potential invasion by Nazi Germany. In August 1941, an eight-point declaration of principles called the Atlantic Charter was issued by President Roosevelt and Great Britain Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The Atlantic Charter was a pivotal policy statement issued during World War II, which defined the Allied goals for the post-war world. In December 1942, the first nuclear chain reaction was produced at the University of Chicago in the Manhattan Project creating fission in the uranium U-235 under the direction of physicist Arthur Compton 
and Enrico Fermi. In June 1943, race riots in Detroit and Harlem caused 40 deaths and 700 injuries. In June 1944, the GI Bill of Rights was signed into law. The GI Bill provides benefits to veterans. In January 1946, the first meeting of the United Nations General Assembly occurred by 51 nations, including China, France, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the USA. These actions would lead to the disbanding of the League Nations on April 18th, when its mission was transferred to the United Nations. In March 1947, the Truman Doctrine was announced to the U.S. Congress. It granted $400 million in aid to Greece and Turkey to battle communist terrorism. In July 1948, Executive Order 9981 ended segregation in the United States military. It was signed off into effect by President Harry S. Truman. In March 1949, Captain James Gallagher landed the B-50 Lucky Lady No. 2 in Texas after completing the first around-the-world non-stop airplane flight. It was refueled four times in flight. April 1949, NATO, the North American Treaty Organization, was formed by the United States, Canada, and 10 Western European nations, Belgium, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, and United Kingdom. The treaty stated that any attack against one nation would be considered an attack against all of them. So that's kind of some of the major events that happened in the 1940s. So now I'm going to kind of talk about how the events affected the fashion in the 1940s. So in the 1940s, the US government put limits on the amount of fabric available for civilian clothes. Women's clothing was tailored and elegant, but dresses and suits in wartime were kept simple. Pockets, frills, and unnecessary buttons disappeared. And to make up for a lack of adornments, women wore hats and high heels and carried long, flat leather handbags. Shortages affected men's fashions even more dramatically. Suits were simple, two-piece garments with squared off shoulders, but because most producers of clothes for men were making military uniforms, it was almost impossible to buy a new suit after 1942. In addition, hem lines were made very differently to save material. Rubber soles were thought of as a luxury. Fashion in the 1940s was a good mix of comfort and glamour. However, men were still pretty dressed up. Suits, ties, and hats were common in public. Women wore dresses and skirts. They didn't wear slacks yet. Another thing that women always wore were gloves. Um, and it was preferably a pair that matched their outfit. Fur was very popular, as were animal skins. So things like crocodile purses, wombat collars, lambskin lining, and leather sleeves. And no animal was off limit. Clothes in the 1940s were very bright and colorful. The brighter, the better. Women's shoes were often one of the three popular color choices. Red, white, or blue. So... Here are some of the pictures. As you can see that they, their dresses were, the hemlines were made a little bit differently than the 30s. Many of the women wore gloves. Especially here, they would wear hats to make up for kind of the 
lack of detailed fabric that they had, but bright colors were very in. Many women still wore dresses, but here is a picture of slacks, but I don't think that that was very common in the 1940s. And then here are the men's suits. As you can see that they still wore suits often, but the suits were not made as often after the war. Couldn't purchase them, but it was still very common for men to wear suits. movies or the music, the movies and culture and how they affected life in the 40s. So after 1941, American life began to change in many important ways. Rural dwellers moved to the cities to work in factories. They included millions of women, ethnic minorities, and teenagers. These groups had never worked together before, so there was often tension between them. Wartime jobs paid well, so many Americans found themselves better off than ever before. Yet, wartime shortages meant that Americans at home had very little on which to spend their money. Many women stayed in the workforce when the war ended. But the emphasis was on home, family, and traditional values. 400,000 mine workers began to strike with other industries following their lead. So music, talking about that, um, Tutti Frutti, song by Little Richard, kind of helped people get their minds off of the war. And um, We Will Meet Again by Vera Lynn was about women who had husbands or partners who were in the war. Swing and jazz were very popular. Jitterbug, the Charleston, and the Lindy Hop were very popular dances. As for the movies, Sherlock Holmes and the Secret Weapon was related to being a Nazi spy, which related the war the world was in. Okay, so now we're going to talk about sports, just a little bit of information about that. So, in September 1941, Todd Williams ended the 1941 season with a batting average over 400. He was the last player to accomplish that feature. In June 1946, the Basketball Association of America was founded. This was to be known later as the NBA. In April 1947, Jackie Robinson broke Major League Baseball's barrier against colored players when he debuted at first base for Branch Rickey's Brooklyn Dodgers. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the war, which took up it's a lot of the topics in the 1940s. So, in June 1940, on the same day, Paris fell to the German army and Auschwitz received its first Polish prisoners. The Naval Expansion Act was signed into law by President Franklin D. Roosevelt, which increased the capacity of the U.S. Navy by 11%. Four days earlier, Roosevelt had condemned the actions of Italy's declaration of war against France and the United Kingdom. In December 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, started at 7.55 a.m. when Japanese fighter planes launched a surprise attack on the United States soil. They destroyed the United States Pacific Fleet docked at that base. 
This attack, which took the greatest amount of United States naval life in history, with 1,177 sailors and marines dying in the attack, the United States also lost 21 naval ships. So here is a photograph of the attack on Pearl Harbor, and there were a lot of American soldiers and sailors and marines who had died from this attack. So this attack led to the entry of American troops into World War II. One day later, the United States of America declared war on Japan officially entering World War II. In December 1941, the United States declared war on Germany and Italy, responding to their declaration of war against America. In February 1942, Executive Order 9066 was signed into law by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. The order combined 110,000 Japanese Americans, including 75,000 citizens, on the West Coast into relocation camps during World War II. The remains of the first of these detention camps reside in California's Manizanar National Historic Site. These camps would last for three whole years. In June 1942, the Battle of Midway was fought at Midway Islands in the Pacific with the Japanese fleet encountering its first major defeat of the war against the United States military. As the Battle of Midway came to an end on June 7th, Japan invaded the Aleutian Islands. This was the first invasion of American soil in 128 years. In June 1942, the development of the first atomic bomb was signed into agreement between the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Winston Churchill, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt in Hyde Park, New York. In August 1942, the United States Marines landed on the Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands in the first American offensive of World War II. A naval battle started on November 12th and lasted for three days, with the United States Navy able to retain control despite heavy losses. In November 1942, North Africa was invaded by the United States and Great Britain. February 1943, the United States encountered its first major defeat at the Battle for Kasserine Pass in Tunisia. In July 1943, the United States Army's 45th Infantry Division landed on the island of Sicily, starting the campaign of Allied invasion into Axis-controlled Europe. Nine days later, Rome is bombed by Allied forces. The conquest of Sicily would be completed on August 17th, when United States forces under General Patton and British forces under Field Marshal Montgomery arrived. In November 1943, the Tehran Conference was held for three days including in an agreement between U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, about a planned June 1944 invasion of Europe with the code name Operation Overlord. In June 1944, the Normandy invasion, D-Day, occurred when 155,000 Allied troops, including American forces and those of 
11 other Allied nations landed in France. Allied soldiers stormed the beaches of France to begin the World War II invasion of Europe that would lead to the liberation of Paris. Operation Overload Lord gained footing quickly, pushing through the Atlantic Wall in the largest amphibious military operation in history. So here is a photograph of all of the Allied forces approaching the beach at Normandy. You can see all of them coming in in their different ways. the greatest continental U.S. tragedy of World War II occurred when two ships loading ammunition at Port Chicago Naval Weapons Station in California exploded. The accident killed 320 people. In July 1944, the United States military began to retake the island of Guam after Japanese troops had occupied the island during World War II. This battle would end on August 10th. In February 1945, 30,000 United States Marines landed on Iwo Jima. In April, American troops invaded Okinawa, which began the Battle of Okinawa, which would continue until June 21st. In March 1945, American troops crossed the Rhine River at Remagen, Germany. Two weeks later, on March 18th, 1,250 U.S. bombers attacked Berlin. This attack caused Adolf Hitler to announce the destruction of his own industries and military installations one day later. In May 1945, the unconditional surrender of Germany at Reims, France, concluded the military engagements of World War II in Europe. It is accepted by General Dwight D. Eisenhower. In July 1945, the first atomic bomb, the Trinity Test, is exploded at Alam Gordo, New Mexico, after its reduction at Los, Los Alamos. So, here is a photograph of the first atomic bomb that was tested at um, Alamogordo, New Mexico. President Harry S. Truman gave the go-ahead for the use of the atomic bomb with the bombing of Hiroshima. So here is a photograph of um, the aftermath of Hiroshima. Is that? You can see it really destroyed a lot buildings. It killed a lot of people. And three days after the Hiroshima bombing, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan. On August 15th, Emperor Hirohito of Japan surrenders. The war shortly ended after that. Okay, so... Regarding immigration, the 1940 census indicates a United States population of 132 million. This represented an increase of 7.3% since 1930, the lowest rate of increase in the 20th century. So some of um, the 
inventions that came in the 1940s are penicillin, rubber tires, slinky, and silly bunny. And it's one of the pictures of the slinky. We're going to do trivia. So we didn't talk about these things, but try your best. Whose famous quote is this? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Yes. It's not Dwight Eisenhower. You're close. Yes. Yes, it is Franklin. D. Roosevelt. What was the minimum wage in the United States in the 1940s? I'll give you a clue, it was less than a dollar. Less than 50 cents. Yes. It's not 40 cents, it's more than 40 cents. Yes, 43 cents per hour was the minimum wage. What percentage of households had indoor plumbing in the 1940s? Yes. It's not 80%, it's less than that. only 55%, so 45% of the households had to use a bathroom outside of the house. This common clothing item was invented in 1942. Mm -hmm. It's not slacks. It's a good guess, though. It is the t-shirt. What Marvel Comics superhero was introduced in 1941? Yes. Yes, it is Captain America. What dog breed was the most popular during the stockade? Spaniel. What does the 1940s slang anger cranked mean? Okay, it means a sailor. Right. This movie came out in 1941 and is regarded by many as the greatest movie of all time. No, that's not correct. It's not that either. It is Citizen Kane. What was the average life expectancy for men and women in the 1940s? Mm -hmm. 65 for men and 67 for women. Very close. It's more than that for both. Or less for men, actually. Yes. It is 60 for women. Does anyone know what it is for men? Mm -hmm. 60. 60 for men and 68 for women. Right, last question. How much did a gallon of gas cost 
in 1840. Mm -hmm. It's not five cents. It's more. Mm -hmm. It's not ten. It's more than that. Mm -hmm. It is eleven cents. Thank you for learning about the 1940s or refreshing your memory about the 1940s. I hope you have a restful sleep. Good night.